E3 2016 had a lot of cool announcements, but we were actually there on the show floor and we want to show you some of the cool things that we saw and you probably didn't. You guys know it's me, Jake Baldino, here to give you 10 cool things from the E3 show floor. Starting off with number 10, Microsoft had a big footprint at E3 this year and they had a ton of kiosks with Forza Horizon 3 playable. But I think the thing that caught everybody's attention was this bad boy. This is a Lamborghini Centenario and this thing was almost terrifyingly badass. This thing was constantly constantly swiveling around showing people how nice it was and it was so shiny and carbon fibery and the interior was absolutely perfect. I'm not the biggest car guy but this had me and a lot of other people drooling over it. Also you're not really allowed to touch it but I, to I totally did. It was right there, how could I not? And at number 9, speaking of driving games, they had Gran Turismo Sport playable on the show floor, but you didn't just walk up to a kiosk, pick up a controller, and play it. The Gran Turismo people actually had custom-built little pods that you sat in in order to play the game, and it was pretty nice. It felt like you were in your own little Formula One racer cockpit. And I put this on the list because honestly, these things were such a cool way to play a game, and they were insanely comfortable. If I could buy one, I totally would. Not to mention, GT Sport wasn't half bad. It wasn't the best-looking driving game, but it's a Gran Turismo game. You kind of know what to expect after all these years. And at number 8, Bethesda had a real nice big booth, kind of somewhat off to the side, but it had some really impressive shit in there. We've already seen a lot of replica stuff for Dishonored, but what I really loved was seeing the Doom Guy armor from the new Doom game, all propped up right in there with a sarcophagus and everything. This armor looked insanely real. Look at the detail on this thing. Not to mention, not only did Bethesda have that on display, but we also got a full-scale replica of the Dova King's Dragonborn armor. And as a big Skyrim Elder Scrolls fan, that was exciting to see too. But seriously, that Doom Guy armor, that was amazing. I almost wish they had somebody wearing it, but that just looks too impossible to wear. It's too cool. And at number seven on our list, check this out. Okay, the show floor had a bunch of different displays with all kinds of merchandise and great action figures and statues and stuff. But check out this really creepy lifelike zombie dog mask from Resident Evil. Look, I don't know why you would ever want to wear a mask of a dead dog's head on your body, but it just looked really cool. It's by these guys over at Ghoulish Productions, and they've actually made a couple of other Resident Evil masks, but this one is the first one that caught my eye. The second I walked past it, I froze because it was really creepy. Big ups to them. Nice job on this one. And at number six, at E3, right outside of the South Hall, was a guy holding a picket sign. Oh, God. We, we, I got it. We, we got to get this, We right? got to capture it. <laughs> he had sunglasses on and a sports helmet. And he was speaking out of a megaphone, but really the megaphone was just an old traffic cone. And on his sign, it said, hashtag, make Tony Hawk great again. And this guy was preaching from the rooftop, saying that you can't let a few bad games ruin a good franchise. He was arguing and begging and shouting to give Tony Hawk another fair shake at a good game. And I gotta say, for me personally, this guy was hilarious, and this was like one of the highlights of E3 this year. I also found out after the fact that apparently this was Jack Douglas, the guy who was the YouTuber Jack's Films, and that was just really cool. I didn't even recognize him just because I was so lost in his important, important message. And at number five, I'm not sure if you guys missed this or not, but The Witcher 3 is getting its own Gwent standalone game. This is going to be a standalone, possibly free to play Gwent game, similar to Hearthstone or Elder Scrolls Legends. To demo this game, CD Projekt Red had a meeting room off to the side of the convention, and it was set up really, really cool. It seemed like the walls were made out of wood, the lighting was very dim, they were serving beer and alcohol, and they had a big old knotty wood table filled with a realistic, classic looking Gwent game pulled right out of The Witcher 3 itself. This is really cool. I really appreciated this because CD Projekt Red basically took what was a boring stale meeting room and transformed it into a Gwent pub. That was awesome. And at number four, The Last Guardian had a pretty big display. This was previously shown off at other conventions, but I got to see it in the flesh this time around. The game was playable on the show floor, but it was also flanked by this giant screen with a big interactive version of the bird dog creature named Trico from the game. And it was somewhat interactive. You could walk up to it, you could wave at it, you could touch it. And sure, it was a little cheesy and the thing had a bunch of canned animations, but at the same time, it felt really cool to get an idea of the sense of scale of how big this thing is in the game compared to the main character that you play as a little boy. It was pretty interesting, and I gotta say, walking up to this thing with this giant bird dog staring you down made you feel pretty small, and it was kinda cool. And at number three, we have another cool meeting room. This time around, it was Telltale Games' setup for Batman. Telltale Games has kind of been showing behind closed doors new glimpses at their story-based episodic Batman adventure game, but the meeting room slash booth thing was set up so, so awesomely. Especially considering I'm a huge Batman fan, I really freaked out. They had the whole place, one room set up like Wayne Manor. It was very ornate, 
very nice with portraits of the Wayne family on the wall. There was some real attention to detail here and there with little things and Batman references. And then the secondary room looked like a slice of the Bat Cave with most impressively a realistic looking Bat computer that was just so cool. I can't really tell you too much about the game yet because they didn't really show too much, but they did let us capture a little footage of the room and I'm pretty pumped to at least show you guys that. And at number two, something very strange that I did not expect to see on the show floor was a booth for Naughty America. Naughty America, for those of you that don't know, is a pornographic website, and here they were representing virtual reality pornography. I'm not gonna get into details too much, but basically you waited in line and you got a demo on a Gear VR headset and experienced actual virtual porn. I mean, I expected like, you know, something a little more PG-13, but no, they were just showing straight up sex. I guess that's why you have to be 18 or older to get an E3, huh? It was just so funny because it was a weird booth and it really didn't totally belong there, but I gotta say, it had a line around the convention center. And at number one, one of the coolest things from the show floor was Nintendo's Zelda booth for their new Zelda game, Breath of the Wild. First of all, to get in line, you had to wait for hours, longer than any line I've ever waited for at something like PAX. And the way it's revealed, you watch an introductory video in a cave and then suddenly the screen lifts up and this whole entire little Hyrule room is revealed to you. There were cathedral ceilings with stone monuments fake trees and plants and bushes everywhere, life-size replicas of the enemies in the game, and a really cool Link statue. They had tons and tons of playable kiosks of the new game. I got to spend a ton of time with it, but goddamn, the place just looked awesome, and it was just this whole hidden wonderland of Zelda-ness that I didn't expect to see there. I just didn't think Nintendo was gonna bring their A game, and they did for their one game. I, I don't know if the video we captured really does it justice, but it was definitely a sight to behold. So I'm glad we could bring that to you guys, as well as everything else I showed on this list. I don't know if you guys checked out our other E3 videos, but you definitely should because it was a good year and we got a ton of information about stuff. I hope you were able to get a good glimpse of what it's actually like at E3. If you did, let's talk about it down in the comments. Were you there? Did you see any cool stuff that maybe we missed? Let's talk about anything E3 down in the comments. If you guys had a good time, clicking the like button helps us out. Maybe we'll go to E3 next year. The subscribing is a good idea too if you're new because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.